Uh, hi, Christian. Hi. All right. Thanks for joining. So, should, do you think we should kick off now? I think there's a few people joining now. Can you see my slides okay? Yep. <clears throat> okay, great. Okay, I guess we should start. So thanks, thanks everyone for, for joining this demonstration. Um, today we're going to be looking at uh, a demonstration on event enabling APIs with a Solis event mesh. And what we'll be showing today is an example of uh, an event driven architecture pattern for publishing and subscribing to live flight tracking telemetry data. Before we go into the demo itself, I'm just going to go through a few slides to introduce what we mean by being event driven and how it's related to APIs. So APIs have evolved over the years from purely programming based interfaces to what we commonly know today as RESTful APIs. However, we are now entering a new era where the term API is also being used not only for synchronous RESTful interactions, but also for asynchronous event based interactions used in event driven architectures. And even though EDA is a relatively new term, the event-driven pattern has actually been around for quite a long time. Solace has been doing this for around 20 years, where it has been heavily used in finance industry for use cases like market data distribution, for example. So now we're starting to see this pattern also being adopted widely in many other industries and being an important part of most organizations' digital, digital transformations projects. So how do we compare a RESTful API-led approach versus an event-driven approach? And when should we use one or the other? So firstly, from an architectural point of view, the interaction styles are very different. With RESTful APIs, it's a synchronous request reply style of interaction. So you can call a RESTful API to get information when you want it. Whereas with an event-driven, it's uh, an asynchronous push style of interaction. So you're given the information when it happens. And this is typically used to enable access to real-time data or frequently changing data. So just looking a little bit deeper at some of the differences and pros and cons of each approach. With RESTful APIs, you can usually call the API directly to get the information you want. So it's straightforward to implement, and this is usually fine for accessing static data or data that doesn't change too frequently. However, for data that is changing more quickly, you end up having to keep polling the service to get the new data, which can become very inefficient and doesn't scale well for larger systems. Also, when calling RESTful API, it's a blocking call, so it can be slow if it's a remote service. And what happens if the API is down or there is a connectivity issue accessing the service, then you often end up having to implement retry logic to cope with those kinds of cases. So looking to event-driven, um, with event-driven, you really need um, a data delivery platform that sits in the middle. So you are really handing over the responsibility for delivering the information to the middleware platform, like Solace, for example. So it provides uh, looser coupling between your applications, which can give you greater agility. And it can also be more scalable, so there's no need for polling for updates. As, the information, as when the information changes, the updates are automatically pushed to you in real time. Also, multiple recipients can also receive the same updates all at the same time. So it uses the publish subscribe message pattern where applications can ask the middleware platform to receive very specific events or to receive sets of related events through the use of topic based subscriptions. So in, in summary, then these patterns are, are quite different. However, they are they aren't mutually exclusive. 
So you don't just decide to use just one or the other. In most cases, you'll want to use a combination of, of both patterns in, in your architecture. OK, so just looking at uh, the demonstration we're going to show you uh, shortly, um, this demonstration um, receives flight tracking uh, aircraft data from um, an open sky API and publishes the real-time updates to an event mesh for display to users in a web-based dashboard. And we've implemented this using the Solis PubSub Cloud platform. And this, this demonstration shows some of the, some of the PubSub Plus features, including a multi-cloud event mesh. Um, in case you're not familiar with the term event mesh, it'd be worth just uh, talking about that for a minute quickly. Um, so the event mesh, what we mean by event mesh, it's that's the runtime platform for an event-driven architecture. It's, it's really that sort of glue in the middle that is responsible for delivering your, your real-time events reliably to all interested recipients. And this event mesh is composed of event brokers that are deployed across your enterprise, which can include multiple cloud regions, whether it's in public or private cloud, or can even be on your own on-prem data centers. And then these event brokers are all connected up to form a global event mesh, enabling all of your applications to send and receive events irrespective of where they're deployed. And the event mesh will automatically and dynamically route events to wherever your applications are running. So that's what we're going to demonstrate uh, in this in this demonstration shortly, uh, along with the PubSub plus message pattern, um, dynamic message routing, where uh, events will be dynamically routed across the event mesh, topic-based subscriptions and filtering. Um, we'll also be um, showing a, micro, so a couple of microservices uh, that have been implemented using Java and the Java APIs and a web dashboard where we display the information using, uh, and that uses the JavaScript API to connect to the event mesh. And we'll also briefly touch on the PubSub Plus Cloud Console and event portal. So looking at the, the architecture for the demonstration, uh, at the top here, you can see we've got um, a Solis multi-cloud event mesh, and we've got a, Solis Cloud broker service running in deployed in Azure, running in Azure in London. That's on the right hand side. And then on the left hand side, we've all got another broker running in the US on AWS US East. And those two services have been connected up. Um, that's the kind of green arrow between them. That's that's the, that's the event mesh in this case across uh, those two regions. It could be a lot larger in, in many, many cases. It could, you know, we could have services also running in Asia and other regions uh, globally. We've just chosen um, London and, and US for, for this demonstration. And on the right-hand side, we've got a couple of microservices, uh, Java-based microservices. At the bottom there, we've got uh, an open sky feed microservice. So this is, this is the microservice that is querying uh, the open sky API. Uh, as a REST API, it's querying that API to retrieve uh, live telemetry data from, from aircraft currently over the UK. And then that microservice will basically break up, break up that response. It's a consolidated response that comes back. Um, and, and the microservice will break up those, all those events, um, all, all those updates, flight updates into separate events and publish them uh, in, separately onto the Solus event mesh. And then we've also got uh, another microservice, uh, an airload, airline code lookup microservice. Again, this is a Java-based microservice um, that uses uh, a REST API hosted by Amadeus that, that does airline lookups. So given an airline code, you call the API with the code, it comes back with a description of that airline. So one part of the demo, we can select, an air, we can select a flight if, if we're not sure what airline that flight's from we can uh, invoke this service to do a lookup and then publish the result back and the results published back onto the event mesh. And again, will be delivered um, and routed to any of the applications that, uh, that are currently running, receiving those, those, all those events. So I'll be running a, a web dashboard um, in, in London. I'm, I'm based in London. Um, so we can have, you know, users uh, based in based in Europe or connected to London. We could have uh, users also based in the U.S., for example, 
they would run dashboards and connect into the their local service running in the US. Um, Christian may also be be doing this as well at the same time. Uh, he's he's not actually in in the US, but we can sort of pull the to purposes. I'll, of this I'll pretend I am now. Yeah, you can pretend you're in the US and you can connect to the to the US broker just to prove that we're we're routing data across to the US side. Um, and this is very efficient because we're we're routing information across across the Atlantic once, right? So um, we could potentially have hundreds or thousands of, of users all in the US, all receiving the same data. Uh, and each update event is only routed across across the Atlantic once, and then it's fanned out locally from, from the US broker uh, to, to its local clients. So it's a lot more efficient than if you had uh, remote clients all, all long lining into one central service, for example. Okay, so uh, what we're showing here is a screenshot of the uh, PubSub Plus event portal. Um, so the event portal is, is part of our, our cloud console where we can go to design and model our, our event-based uh, architectures. So here we've got a screenshot of, of the architecture for this demonstration. Um, so this gives you kind of a logical view um, of your event flows between your, your applications. So in this case, this demonstration, we've got uh, three applications. They're the, the kind of larger, larger circles, icons. Uh, on the right-hand side, that's the, the open sky feed microservice. In the middle, we've got the flight tracker dashboard. On the left-hand side, we've got the airline code lookup microservice. And then the smaller um, green circles represent the events that are being published to and subscribed to from between the different applications. So if we look at the events that are going between the flight tracker dashboard and the open sky feed, for example, at the top there, we've got a start event. So that's an event that can be uh, published by the, the dashboard. I think you can just about see the, the arrows on the event indicating the direction. Um, I don't know if you can see my cursor at all, but but that event there going going from the dashboard to the Open Sky feed. So that that basically kicks off. That's a start event that kicks off the the Open Sky feed to start running and start collecting data from the Open Open Sky API, and then start publishing those events out onto the event mesh. We've also got uh, an availability event that's actually published back from the Open Sky feed. Um, so that's just an indication to to the dashboard to say that the open sky feed is running um, so that we can show something in the UI to, to know that uh, we can we, we can actually kick, kick off the start event and get the microservice to start running. And then obviously the main event at the bottom there is the, the flight tracker plane update event. So once the microservice uh, is started and running, we can get these flight tracker update events, which are published out uh, as they independently uh, onto the mesh, and then they're being subscribed to by the flight tracker dashboard. And then we've got a similar set of events um, that, that flow between the, the airline code lookup service and the flight tracker dashboard. So the main ones are the request event. So when you want to re request a, an airline code lookup, that event would be published out from, from the dashboard. And that would be picked up by the, the airline lookup microservice. And then that would query the Amadeus API to return the result, and then that's published back out uh, as, as a result event, which would be published back out onto the event mesh and can be uh, subscribed to and received by any of the flight tracker dashboards that are currently running. So just looking at the, uh, the APIs quickly uh, before we get into the live demo. Um, so this is the Open Sky API, um, and this is uh, Open Sky's network. Uh, it allows you to retrieve uh, live uh, airspace information uh, through the REST API. Um, you can query for flights in a given area, flights for a given time interval, flights for a given aircraft, and also arrivals and departures by airport. Um, the one we're gonna be using for this demonstration is, is the first one, so flights for a given area. So we're gonna be looking at flights uh, over the UK. So we're going to be using a query as, as in the example here to which will return all the current flights uh, over the over in the UK region. Now, as I said before, this sort of comes all comes back in one consolidated response. 
um, which we're going to break up into discrete events. So obviously this this API is not is not event driven itself. We're kind of enabling it to be more event driven. Um, it would be great if if this API could push out events uh, independently as as updates occur. Uh, but unfortunately, the way this is written is with a with a REST based interaction, so it's more synchronous. So we have to kind of do this kind of polling, and then you know when we return a response, get a response back, we'll then in turn publish those events out as as independent events as though it were event driven itself. So what we get back is a, a list of properties for for each for each current flight. Um, the first one is this 24-bit uh, hex address is a unique uh, identifier for the aircraft. And then we have the call sign is basically the flight code for that particular flight. Uh, then we have information about its, its current position, its latitude, longitude, its altitude, velocity, track, etc. And also every time we, we poll for this information, it comes back with the latest updates uh, in, in sort of in, in real time. And what we're going to do is take those that consolidated response and publish them out as separate discrete events onto the event mesh. So for every for every flight, what we'll be doing is publishing uh, an event to a topic. Uh, they'll be published to a dynamic topic that's formed um, as shown here. Um, it's a hierarchical uh, namespace. So it starts with flight tracker. So all the events in this demonstration will start with flight tracker. And the next part is planes. So this is an event to do with planes. It's an update event. And then we have the source, which is populated dynamically at runtime. In this case, it's going to be open skies. This, this data came from the open sky API. And then the last part is the flight code, which again will be populated dynamically for, for each flight. So in this example, we've got uh, an example for an American Airlines flight. So the topic would be flight tracker plane update OS for open sky and AAL 239. So this flight is American Airlines 239. And on the right hand side here, you can see the actual data content that's published in the message. Hex is the, let's say the, the aircraft uh, identifier, unique identifier for each aircraft. The flight code, uh, it's latitude, and longitude, it's, it's track or direction, it's altitude and it's speed. So applications uh, that are connected onto the event mesh, anywhere on the event mesh can, can subscribe to, to these events um, by, the, by the way of topic subscriptions. So this is what the, the, uh, the dashboard uh, will be doing. It will be subscribing to these particular topics. And we can use wildcards uh, to, to enable a subscription to sets of events. So at, at the end of the, at the top here, we've got a st two stars which basically means a wildcard so that uh, we would be subscribing to uh, events from any source and for any flight. Uh, if we want to narrow that down, in the second example, we've got uh, a subscription for um, a topics, events on topics that are, that are for any source, from any source, and also related to just American Airlines. So any, any topic or any event with a topic that starts with AAL, uh, would be would be received by a subscription of that form. So we'll demonstrate that as, as we get into the demo. Right, and the airline code lookup again, this is an Amadeus uh, hosted by Amadeus. It's a REST API that returns an airline description for a given airline ICAO, ICAO code. Um, there are actually two types of codes for airlines. There's an IATA code, which is the one you typically see on your boarding pass. There's also an ICAO code, which is what we'll be using in this case. It's usually a three-letter code. So here's an example for, for British Airways. It would be uh, BAW in this case. And these are the topics that are used um, to request an airline code lookup to the microservice and what the microservice will use to publish the result back on. So we've got a screenshot from our Solis Cloud console. Um, so obviously, we would need to do to, to run this demonstration. We'd first have to set up an event mesh and deploy broker services in in London, in Azure, in London, and in AWS in the US. US. Um, we've already done that. Um, you know, before the demonstration, this would probably take you know 10, 15 minutes or so. 
uh, to set that up, that, all, that can be all done through our Solid Cloud Console. Uh, it's very easy. It's all kind of point and click. You can just choose where you want to deploy services, um, start them up. Um, once they've started, you can then connect them up to form this event mesh. So as I say, that's already been set up for the demonstration, but here's a screenshot of what it would look like if you were to do that yourself. Right, okay, and now let's finally get into the demonstration. So if you bear with me, I'm just gonna have to switch windows so we can do this. I don't know, Christian, if there are any questions or anything else you'd like to add just while I'm, I'm doing that. Oh, I haven't seen any questions in the chat, but maybe as a reminder, like if anyone wants to ask questions, feel free to just pop them in the chat. I'll keep an eye on it and I'll answer them either in the chat or we'll address them here as well. So um, maybe one one key to um, highlight here. Uh, so the Solace event mesh is um, ultimately like a data distribution layer. and. Uh, Many of the things you, you might you might see in this demo can be done with RESTful APIs um, using polling. Um, but if you're doing it in an event-driven way, as Richard is, is, has been uh, talking about, like the real benefit of it is the scalability um, and the ability to push the data out um, across multiple data centers. Uh, so when you have a RESTful API, you, you have to call a certain endpoint in one data center. Um, which works fine as long as you're in that data center. But if you are actually having an enterprise that is doing multi-cloud or hybrid cloud, uh, or even being globally deployed, um, and you have your sources in specific locations, you can push that data onto the mesh and your consumers can receive it anywhere, anywhere without having to long line into your source being uh, somewhere across the globe. Um, so you can Obviously, see that that has benefits uh, from a performance uh, point of view, from a latency point of view, and also from security point of view for your networks, um, because you only have to open up your firewalls for the event mesh, and no longer for all your various clients that might be interested in the data. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so let's run the demo. So I've got the flight tracker dashboard up. Hopefully, you can see that. Um, at the top here, I've got uh, some connectivity information, how we can connect the browser uh, to, to the event mesh. Um, as, as we said, there are two services currently running that are connected up in the event mesh. There's one in London, there's one in, in the US. Um, I can select which one I want to, to connect to here. So I'll connect to the London one. Um, and maybe Christian can also do the same time. He can connect into the US one. So when I click connect, I'll, that will connect me into, into the event mesh. And when I click subscribe, um, it's going to set up a subscription to, to this topic. Um, so in this case, we, we're using the wildcard. So we've got stars at the end here. So we would receive events from any source and for any flight. And we're not seeing anything yet. That's because we haven't actually sent the, the start event uh, across to the, the, the microservice that's collecting the data from through the OpenSky API. So when we click start over here on the right hand side, that will actually send that event off. And then we'll start to should start to see events coming in. Right. So we've got events coming in. Uh, events are being uh, printed to the screen here. So every time an event comes in, it's getting printed. Obviously, where we're obviously seeing all, all the flights uh, on the dashboard and then moving around uh, in real time as we get updates. Yeah, maybe worth mentioning here that this is real flight data. So these are actual planes being in the sky right now. That we see here. That's right. So I can select select a plane. Uh, and on the right hand side here, it's showing the, the, selected, the selected flight. It's showing that the, the, the flight code, in this case, it's a KLM flight. Uh, this is its the, the unique hex address for this aircraft. This is its current altitude. Looks like this one is, is going up and down, up and down a bit. Um, it's speed, oh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's heading, direction, it, and obviously it's, uh, its position is latitude and longitude. And the source in this case, all these, all this data is coming through OpenSky, but we could potentially have other sources of data that we would perhaps want to differentiate between. Um, so what, what we can do here is we can also invoke the, 
the the lookup service. So if there's a if there's a flight for an airline that we're not sure what which one it is. So this one, okay, I'm not quite sure what airline that is. Let's go and click on on this, which will send an airline code lookup request to that microservice. We'll bring back the response and then publish it out. And we should see that come back uh, at the bottom here, right? So THY is actually Turkish Airlines. And Christian should have also picked up that same event and that should also be seen on, on his display as well. Christian, I don't know if you want to do an airline code lookup from your side and we should see that pop up on, on this screen as well. Yeah, sure. I've got a plane selector here that is uh, has the airline code EXS. I have no idea what that is, so I'm just going to click on lookup airline. It's done it. So I'm, I'm connected to the US broker, so that yeah. may take a little longer. Yeah, um, got it. I've got it here. So yeah, EXS has come in. So that's JET2. JET2, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. And we can obviously see at the top here, we can see our kind of average message rate as messages are coming in. Uh, this is the number of events that are being received uh, per minute. So we're getting a fair number of events coming in. And what I can do is I can change my subscription to, to filter down those events. So if I want to just look at uh, BA flights, for example, if I BA star, hit subscribe. Right now, so you can see far fewer flights, far fewer planes, and the message rate has dropped significantly. So now I'm only really showing uh, BA flights. So I'm only being pushed uh, those updates into this uh, dashboard for for BA flights. In case you're wondering what the what the colors indicate, it's actually the the altitude. So kind of planes that are sort of more blue in color, they're generally higher. So this one is like 25,000 feet. Uh, lower flights. Uh, will turn more kind of yellow and more of an when they get very low kind of more of an orange color this one's lower possibly this one's possibly coming into land at Heathrow so it probably start to turn turn more orange as it comes into land as it as it descends I think uh, what's what might be good with mentioning here is that the filtering is actually being done on the server side so um our topic filtering um, capabilities in the broker allow you to use the pop sub pattern to just match um, messages that are uh, matching your filter criteria, right? So in this case, um, Richard selected BA uh, star on the fourth level of this um, topic hierarchy. Uh, so you can't count it's the fifth level actually. Um, yeah. And now the broker is no longer pushing all the data to him, it's just pushing those messages that match that um, That's right. uh, yeah. code, actually. And you could kind of do this any way you need it to be. So um, we have other use cases where um, people are actually publishing the latitude and longitude um, coordinates as well. And you can use that for filtering on the map as well of, of what kind of uh, flights um, or containers or uh, buses or cars. Um, you name it, like any any sort of like moving uh, objects on the global map, uh, you could filter that all in the in the data distribution, cache, so so to speak. Yeah. So just to highlight that, I mean, obviously you can see here now the message rate is much lower than it was before, because we're only being pushed events for BA flights. I mean, I can narrow this down even further. So if I wanted to look at just this one flight, for example, this is BA969H. Right, so now I've only got one plane on screen and I'm just receiving events for this for this one flight. So now I'm getting yeah, six, seven messages per minute. So it's it's only sending me those events from for this one particular flight. So I can you know, with this topic-based subscription, I can I can really narrow down very specifically what type of information I want. Uh, it can be, you know, large sets of information where we use wildcards, or it could be very specific information uh, where we're subscribing to you know, information that's 
that's um, that's created dynamically when we actually publish this this topic. So there's no there's no kind of configuration at all in the event mesh to do with these topics. It's all it's all done completely dynamically. I guess um, Let's go back if to... there are any questions, um, now is a good time to, to ask them. Um, while we're waiting for questions, I, I'd like to say that um, obviously we're here uh, relying on a service that is restful, as, as Richard said. Um, and ideally, in an event-driven architecture, you want your sources all to be event-driven as well. But it kind of demonstrates that these two worlds of uh, synchronous APIs and asynchronous APIs can be bridged um, in, in this fashion, right? So if you have a source that, that can only be polled, it's still better to only poll it once. Uh, so this microservice that Richard was showing is, is, is actually uh, querying this open sky API, which is RESTful. Um, but rather than having many, many clients doing this um, on, on one server um, that is behind this API, uh, we, we just ask for this information once and anyone who's interested in it can just retrieve it from the event mesh. So uh, the event mesh is really good at distributing the data once really and it's fanning out at the edges of the mesh. So if you have a very complex mesh with multiple sites, multiple data centers or multiple clouds, multiple regions, every time the data leaves one side and goes to another, it's just being sent once. And even if you have like 1,000 clients on each side, the data is then turned out in the side and not uh, like sent multiple times across the wide area network, which saves you bandwidth, which saves you cost. And also, it makes it possible to, to uh, scale this architecture. Right, I don't see any questions in the chat. Uh, so Richard, anything you want to say to summarize this? I think that's that's all I have to show for now. Um, but if there's yep, any questions or if anyone you know, wants any more information, please let us know. Um, we, we can give more demonstrations uh, on Solid Cloud and how and how you know that works behind the scenes here. Obviously, we're seeing here just uh, the, the the end demonstration. But if anyone would like to see uh, more internals on Solid and how it works, then please come and let us know, and we'll happily show you that too. Yeah, some good sites um, to check out um, if you're more interested as well. Go to solace.com, um, which is our main site. Uh, we have also solace.cloud for the software as a service um, service that you can just go and subscribe to, or you can uh, contact us there and we can discuss like how to get that installed in your data center as well. Um, Otherwise, there's uh, solace.dev as well. Um, so that's a site dedicated for developers um, where you can find uh, code examples and more techie information um, that might help you get started with Solace. And we also have solace.community, which is our community um, for our developers where you can ask questions if you're uh, struggling with certain aspects of the technology or in general with event-driven architecture and our APIs. Um, just look us up there, and uh, there are Solus experts answering your questions, but also many, many other uh, users who are uh, using Solus technology. That's great. Thanks, Christian. All right. If there's any, if there aren't any other questions, then thanks for your time. I think that's the end of the demonstration. All right. Thank you very much for joining, and hopefully see you soon. Bye bye. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye.